everyone, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I'm a watercolor and acrylic artist. So I wanted to paint on a larger size canvas for you in acrylics. We're gonna be doing these beautiful uh, whimsical florals, but I decided to do it on a larger canvas. So my angle shot is gonna be different. Uh, just painting it on an easel was easier for me. So we're just gonna give it a try. So I hope this works out, and I hope you enjoy the video. So in today's video, I just want to show you a little bit of how I start one of my paintings. Uh, this size here canvas is a 15 by 30, and it is about one and a half inches thick. Um, so I'm going to be wrapping the sides, and I'm just using acrylic paint today, and I just wanted to show you a little bit of my process of how I start a painting. Okay, so now that I've got my first um, layer of paint down, and it is still pretty tacky, I am going to start dropping in little, um, I've got my titanium, um, unbleached titanium here, so I'm going to start putting on little, like little dots of it here and there, and I'm just going to start spreading that in. And you don't want to mix it too much because you do still want to see that titanium white in there. I'm gonna go ahead and get my brush just a little bit wet so it goes on a little bit creamier. And you're just gonna go in motions. If you want this blurred effect in the background, you're just gonna to wanna to do um, these brush strokes that are a little bit everywhere. Um, you just, you kinda of don't have a pattern. Just don't, always, don't go in the same direction because you won't get that look. You wanna go in every single direction. And you can be using a thinning agent here, which I might do in a second. I keep dipping in my water, but I think I might use this thinning agent that I have uh, by Liquitex. And I'm gonna start dropping in other little colors here too. Like I've got, uh, this is called yellow ochre. And if you see that your uh, canvas is starting to dry in certain areas, um, then just go ahead and let it dry completely uh, because if it starts getting really tacky, it will start picking back up the paint that you just laid down. And I'm actually liking the white better than the titanium, but I might use both. I'm sorry, than the uh, unbleached titanium. Okay, so my canvas is nice and dry, and I'm going to go ahead and give it a second coat. I did move over to a one-inch filbert brush, and the reason I did that is because I want to give it a softer look now. Uh, with the flat brush that I was using before, since it's squared off, it gives it a little bit more sharper lines, and I just want to soften up my background a little bit. So the filbert brushes are nice and round, and it gives a really nice effect when you're trying to soften something. Okay, so I've got my titanium white, and I've got my slow-medium mix going on so that it dries nice and slowly. And I also have the original, I also have the original um, dark gray color that I had done at the beginning. So I'm gonna be mixing those three colors together a little bit here and there, or I should say two colors with the slow drying medium. And I'm just gonna soften up my edges a little bit, pulling in a little bit more of that white and, and uh, gray. So I have all three mediums on my brush right now the gray, the white, and the slow medium, and I'm getting this nice soft effect that I like right here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be bringing in a little bit more of that um, yellow ochre. I might, but right now, this is the look that I wanna go for.
Okay, so now that my first layer dried, I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna kind of give it the smoky effect with this transparent white. Uh, it's called Transparent Mixing White, it's by Liquitex. Um, I think it's also just the zinc uh, white is uh, better uh, for a smoky effect than the, um, than the titanium white. So, but I'm also gonna be mixing it with the slow dry medium. So we'll see how, what kind of effect we get when we mix these two together. So I'm gonna be putting a little bit on my palette here. And it's gonna give you this really smoky, transparent white. Now, if you wanna add another color in there, you can. I think I might add another color. I'm gonna see how this looks first. And I'm just going in all sorts of different directions. Now my canvas is pretty large, so I do need a little bit more of the white and the slow drying medium, but if you were using a smaller canvas, it really wouldn't be this much. I just use, chose to use a bigger canvas. And before your paint dries completely, you're gonna want to soften up your edges by just going over a little bit. Just keep reworking it before it dries up completely. Now, if you see that it's getting really tacky and your brush strokes are actually lifting up the paint, then just stop, let it dry, let your, your painting dry completely. See how it was lifting up in this area right here? That just means the paint was starting to dry and I just kept reworking it. So it was, all it was doing was just lifting the paint. So just leave it alone and let it dry. Okay, so now that I got that smoky effect going on throughout most of my canvas here, I do, do still see some of that uh, burnt sienna color uh, peeking through in some of the areas, but I just want to make it a little bit more pronounced. So I'm just going to take a little bit more of my burnt sienna and I'm going to thin it out with my slow drying. And I'm just going to kind of go over some of those areas that I had already done. And I'm just going to want to overlap what I, had, what I just did just to bring out that burnt sienna a little bit more. Now, if you think you did a little too much, you can always thin it down, clean off your brush, go over it with just a little bit of water and thin it down a little bit. Okay, so I went ahead and I dried my canvas. It's still a little bit tacky to touch, so I'm gonna be careful with it and try not to overlap too much and just work one area too much because it might end up lifting up my paint again. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take my Prismacolor pencil, it's a white, and I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see it on camera, but it's just gonna kind, of, kind of lay out where I want my flowers. Now these are just gonna be really whimsical, playful flowers, um, nothing realistic. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pencil in where maybe I want the center of my flower, and then the stem coming down. And I'll pencil in where I want another flower. And they're just gonna be nice, long, big, long flowers. Let's say we want a really big one up here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start squirting out some of the colors that I'm gonna be using. This one here is a permanent green light. So I'll let you know what colors I'm using as I'm going along. I'm just winging this. This is nothing I really planned. I just wanted to show you kind of my process, my thinking of how I usually do my larger paintings. Um, so I'm not even sure how it's going to really look. We're just going to, I'm just going to wing it. And I just squirted out a little bit of my hooker's green. And I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow oxide. All right, let's see here. I am going to take my size 10 filbert brush. And I'm going to take a little bit of my green, my two greens. And I'm going to start just laying down where I want the stems to be. So this is my hooker's green and my permanent green light mixed together. And if your lines aren't straight, it's okay. This is whimsical florals, so they don't have to be straight. So again, those were just my four colors, my titanium white, my yellow oxide, my permanent green light, and my hooker's green. 
And I'm gonna leave leaves for later. I'm not gonna add that many leaves right now. I wanna go onto my florals. And I think I'm gonna be using a little bit of my quinacridone magenta. I can't say that word. But I'm gonna squirt a little bit of that out of my palette. And also my titanium white. And I'm gonna mix up this really nice pink color. Look at that. Now I do wanna to move to a bigger brush, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's move to a 12. Now my paint is going on, I still see a little bit of my, um, my canvas peeking through. That just means that I haven't diluted my paint enough. I, my paint is just too dry, so I need to use a little bit of my, little bit of my water or my slow drying mix on it. And I'm just getting down just the first coat here. I just want to cover my canvas where my flowers are going to be doesn't necessarily mean this is the way they're going to stay. Now I've got white on part of my brush and the magenta on the other part of my brush. So then that way you see both colors coming through. And I've said this on videos before where I actually like to mix the paint right onto the canvas. I, I do use my palette, but I don't use it that much. I like to, I like to actually put all the colors on my brush and just watch. The colors mixed together right on to the canvas. I just think that's really, really pretty. Um, I think I'm going to do, while I've got that color out, I think I'm going to pull it in somewhere else, but I don't want all my flowers to be this color. Uh, let's see, let's pull it in down here. And you could do different shaped flowers. I'm just doing these wavy lines, just very, very easy, very whimsical florals. And actually, I think I want to put in a little bit more white while I've got, while my paint is still nice and dry up here. I'm not dry, wet up here. It could blend in nicely. So I just want to add a little bit of that white. And let's see, my next flower, I think I'm going to take my Cad Yellow. I've got Cad Yellow Light here, and then also my Yellow Oxide that we were using before. Um, I am going to Mix a little of those together on my palette. And let's see, let's do this flower right here. So I like to have, see how you see a little bit more of the cad yellow down here and a little bit more of the uh, yellow oxide on top. I like that look. I like the look of seeing all the colors on there. And again, it's just a bunch of C curves. That's all it is. All right, uh, let's see. Let's do this one yellow. And we're going to go right over our stem there. That's why we did our stems first. So that way our flower can go right in front of it. And try to get crisp edges, go slow and look at, as you're bringing your C curve up, look at what you're, look at the outside line and just make sure that it's nice and crisp. And I'm gonna bring in a little bit of white again. And if you feel like you need some bigger flowers, you know, just make it larger if you have to. And I might go ahead and adjust some of these later. I'm not 100% sure yet. Actually, maybe this one could be a little larger. So you would just add a little bit more paint to the outside. as well. Give it more of this peachy color. 
I think I might add another orange flower down here. Even though I didn't draw it before, I think I'm just going to add another one down here. And I think I'm going to add some more white to those flowers too, to the pink flowers. I've got a little bit of my orange still in my brush, but that's okay. All right, now I want some different kind of florals in here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in some different kind of florals, more maybe uh, with uh, more like cone flower type looking or black eyed Susan looking flowers. Uh, I'm gonna choose my burnt sienna and I'm gonna be poking through a couple flowers here and there. I will take a little bit of white and my burnt sienna and I'm gonna just make the cone for that flower, and then all the petals are gonna start coming out. So let's see, I'll want one there, and maybe I'll want one facing this way, with the cone going that way. One probably down here. Probably right in front of this stem. All right, let's see if I like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start making some petals this way. And I'm just going to lay out where I want my, my petals to be. Start filling them in. And I'm still using my size 10 filbert brush. Pick up a little bit of my white as well. And I'm just kind of going in an oval motion. I'm just filling in those petals. that dry for a second we're going to go on to the other ones so here again now this one is coming out this way all right and the way I did that with my my filbert brushes you've got the thick side and the thin side to the brush I turned it so it's the thin side and I was using it a little bit more like that so it wasn't a thick line and now I'm going to turn it, turn it the thick way to fill in my petals. It looks nicer when you have a little bit of different colors in the petals. It just gives it a little bit more pop. See how I added a little bit of that blue in there? Now this is the same blue that I used to mix this color. So I didn't pick a different blue. I'm using the same blue that I used to mix the color. I'm just pulling it out a little bit more. Okay, so I went ahead and I gave my uh, three cone flowers the first coat of their petals, but I want to go in with a smaller brush now. I think I'm gonna Take my size, this is a six. I think I want even smaller than this, but I don't know if I have one on hand. That's all right, we'll make the size six work. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of my cat orange, and I just wanna give these little um, cones here where all the seeds are, I just wanna give it a little texture. So I'm going in with my brush, not the thick way, but the thin way, and I'm just making little dash marks because the center of the cone flowers are pointy. They have these little spikes. So I'll start with the outside and then I'll start moving inside. All right, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of my burnt sienna, which was my original color to make these. 
And I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the same thing. So there's some little spikes of the orange and the sienna. So I will take my cat orange again and start making all these little spikes. And I'm just dabbing my brush right onto the canvas. And then I'll do my burnt sand again right over that. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my Mars Black and I'm gonna add a little bit of Mars Black to my Burnt Sienna just to make it a little bit deeper of a color. And then I'm gonna just start adding that in there too. You don't wanna do it too much, but just a little bit, maybe more where the base of the flower is. So I'm going to do it to this flower too. Okay, so we went in and we put in the cones of those flowers, those turquoise flowers. Now I'm going to start doing the centers of my other flowers. So I'm going to move over to my big brush again. Uh, let's see, let's use a, let's use a 12 for this. And I'm going to start with my burnt sienna. And I'm just going to do a little round circle right in the middle. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of my black and mix it in with a little of my burnt sienna and just bring out that color just a little bit more. So I'm just going. I'm curving my brush. I'm curving it in my fingers. Curve it one way and then curve it the other way. And you know what? I think we forgot to make a flower right there. We're going to have to figure out what flower we want to go there. Let's go ahead and mix some of our white and our magenta again. We'll do these a little bit more like a peony since they're like a nice pink we'll make them even rounder and fluffier pretty and actually I think I might do another one down here like I was saying before I like things in odd numbers so I'm gonna do another one down here Just going to start doing some white little C curves here and there. All right, so step back, take a look at your composition, and I know already that I need something right in here. I've left this negative space right there, and I don't like that. So I already see that I have to fix that. And I think what I'm going to do is another hot pink flower. Since I've got the, the three teals almost in a triangle, the three pinks almost in a triangle, and I'll do the three um, fuchsias like this. So, and actually, I want them to overlap a little bit. So I'm going to overlap my flowers a little bit. Let's overlap the, the orange one. And just start filling it in. start adding some leaves. So I still have my hooker's green and my green light. My permanent green light and I mixed a little bit of my yellow in there. And we're just going to start making some leaves. Just very generic leaves wherever you think you need some green. 
and I mix them all on my brush, uh, the colors. I have them all on my brush so it mixes right onto my canvas again. And just start filling in where you think it needs some greenery. And if you think even overlapping is a nice idea, but if you don't like that, you could always go in with your flower later and go right over that leaf again. And I think I'm gonna add a little white in here now, just so it punches it out in some of these darker, some of my canvas is a little bit darker down in this area, so add a little white to it if you've got that problem. And then your leaf will stand out even more. And then you could even have some leaves, like there's flowers coming off the side of your canvas. You can even have some leaves peeking through the side here too. Just to fill in a little bit of that negative space. And then you're also going to have some greenery kind of like behind some flowers that don't make sense because they're just peeking through the flowers. So some of the leaves are going to be behind the flowers. And I'm making them all different shades of green. Can I add a little more yellow in there too? And you can start overlapping some of your leaves. Okay, so what I did was I ended up going in with a little bit of the blue that I already had on my palette and I added a little bit of blue to some of my, my leaves here just to kind of incorporate the blue because the green was just getting to be too much. I needed to pull a little of another color out. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking my original gray that I actually had painted first on my canvas and I'm going in and I'm making some leaf shape looking little things with the darker gray. That is going to just pull a little bit of that gray background that we had first done forward again, but in a little bit of a darker way. And I'm actually going over some of my leaves as well. It doesn't have to be around your leaves completely. It could be actually even just adding in some leaves. So let's add one right here. And it'll look like some of your leaves are a little bit shadowed and some of, our, some of them are a little bit more pronounced in the foreground. Now, we might go in and where we are overlapping them, we might pull that green one back over the gray one. So we're just going to keep reworking this. Uh, let's see. And I don't want to do the gray ones too far up because I want to keep the dark gray more towards the, the bottom here. So I am just going to start adding in a little bit of gray here and there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash off my brush. And I'm going to bring in some of the green back over some of the, the green ones we just did. So go ahead and just start making all the mixtures with all those greens that you had done in the beginning. And you can start going in over some of these, these gray. Or you can start overlapping some of your other leaves over that gray. Now some of these colors are a little bit more transparent than others. If that's the case, go ahead and add a little bit of white to some of your greens or yellows. Mostly the yellows are transparent um, and some of the greens are too. More of the yellow greens are a little bit transparent as well. So go ahead and just add a little bit of white to it and it'll make it a little bit more opaque for you again so that it covers up some of those leaves. And if it's too bright for you, just go ahead and tone it down a little bit. You could always do that with maybe a little bit of your burnt sienna. Just turn, tone it down a little bit. Just add a little bit of that orange back in there. We'll just kind of make it more of a, um, of a neutral. Again, you could have mixed this on your palette. I like to see all the colors on my canvas. I, my paintings tend to be a little bit bolder so I don't mind mixing things right on my, my canvas. 
but if your paintings are a little bit more subtle and light-handed, um, you might want to mix your colors on your palette. It's looking pretty. See how many colors we got going on in there now? So some look like some of the leaves look like they're in front of the others. And if you want to lighten up some more, you can. If you feel like you need a little bit more color variety in here, you can totally do that. Sienna, my burnt sienna again, for the center of the fuchsia. And then a little bit of my black. Okay. And we can also start putting in a little bit of a highlight if we want in some of them. Again, those were just little C curves. Take more of my white. And I'm gonna to tone it down a little bit. And just keep playing around with it until you think you feel that you like what's going on in there. And if some of your leaves went in front of your flowers and you don't like that, now's the time to start bringing in some of those flowers back over the leaves. I like to do a little bit lighter on the outside of the petals and make it a little bit darker on the inside. And then you can start bringing in over that center a little bit so it's not so much a circle. So it's not like a perfect circle. You can start bringing in some of your petals over that. Just going to start crispening up some of my edges of my flowers here.
it's about time to start stepping back and seeing what I'm doing because I'm not looking at the full picture again. Oh, this looking really pretty. Okay. So I'm seeing right now I need to d deepen up the middle of my flower here. I need to bring in a little more definition to this flower. And then of course my fuchsias I haven't done yet. So I do need to work on that as well. So it does help to stand back. And I'm going to put a little more in there. too white, which I think mine is. Just grab a little bit more of your magenta and go over it again. And if you notice throughout this whole painting, when I work on one flower, I try to hit all the same flower while I'm in that mood already to do that one kind, then I just go ahead and finish them all. Um, so like if I was going to rework my cone flower again right now, I would rework, rework all of them again a little bit right now. Oh, I'm going to start giving a couple of these uh, flowers highlights, like the cone flowers, maybe like on the tips of the cones of the cone flowers. I think I'm going to fix up a little bit more of my greenery. I went ahead and down towards the bottom only, I put a little bit of a darker uh, gray. I mixed a little bit of black with my original gray, and I just filled in between the leaves a little bit just to ground the bottom a little bit more. Now I wanna give it uh, maybe some white flowers, just like little, little white flowers here and there, just to kind of pop another layer onto this painting. Here and there. And I'll just kind of bring the painting together a little bit. You don't have to choose white. You can choose whatever color you want. And I think I'm going to do it more towards the bottom here. Just to break up some of these leaves. But I think I'm going to go ahead and bring in some branches. I kind of like the way it looks when there's some dark branches coming in. Um, or even berries. Maybe a, maybe a branch or two peeking through. I'll do it with my small brush and I will pull in my heart sienna. And I just want to kind of break up a little bit of that. And make it look like there's some twigs. And then it's always best to start thin and then thicken them up as you go. And I think now that I did that, I'm going to go ahead and put some berries. I think I'm going to put some like little flowers on it. Maybe this is one of those little white ones we have down on the bottom. And you can start adding some swirls if you want to your green. I'm just taking a little bit of my hooker's green and white and I sometimes just come in with a little swirl here and there just to lighten up my painting a little bit. You don't need to do this part, they're like little, just little squiggles here and there. So I did go ahead and I finished my painting off camera. I did make a couple little changes since I videotaped. I added a couple more florals down at the bottom of the canvas. I felt it needed a little bit more color towards the bottom of the canvas. Um, and then the white flowers that I had made on top, I thought it was a little bit too stark against the dark gray background, so I toned them down a little bit and I made them a little bit more of this creamy yellow color. I feel that works out a little bit better. 
and some of the leaves I added a little bit more of that aqua color in the leaves I just wanted to punch the color out just a little bit more so I did make a few changes um, and I actually just went around some of my flowers a little bit and added a little bit more highlight but other than that it was pretty much the same of what I uh, had done on camera so I'm actually hoping you like that I painted on an easel because I had a lot of fun doing it. So leave me a comment in the comment box if you did like it this way and I will continue to paint on easels for you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Bye.